Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be talking about the equipment that I utilize for my YouTube videos. Most of this equipment is going to be geared towards uh, beginners who might not necessarily have a huge budget to start with their YouTube videos. So um, I will give some suggestions for upgrades if you are looking for something that is a little bit higher quality for some of the um, different sections like we'll be talking about cameras, lighting, audio, and all of that good stuff. So before we get into that, I really want to thank you guys. I am so close to 1,000 subscribers, so uh, it's definitely an exciting time for me and I'm glad that you guys are enjoying my content. If you haven't subscribed, then thanks for checking out my channel first of all, but if you like uh, photography, videography, tutorials, gear reviews, all of that good stuff then definitely subscribe also since I mainly shoot with Canon cameras that is definitely a large focus of this channel so if you shoot Canon or you're thinking about switching to Canon then this channel will definitely be helpful for you so let's talk about cameras first if you're just starting out with YouTube I would suggest going with the Canon EOS R this camera is awesome and it is a camera that you will definitely be able to grow into Usually you can find one of these used for around $1,300 to $1,400. Um, I do know that I've seen them as low as $1,200 before used, so it's a really great value. If you're not looking to spend over $1,000, then you can definitely check out the Canon EOS RP, which is actually what I started this YouTube channel on. But I do think you'll find yourself in a position where you'll want to upgrade pretty quickly. Yeah, but like I said, if you're looking to go with Canon stuff, then I definitely think that the Canon EOS R is a good buy for you. And, um, you know, I've shot with the R6 and the R5, and I do use the R5 a lot for YouTube, but it's just because I have that extra quality and I, I'm thinking I might as well use it. But like I said, the R is definitely a great purchase if you're looking for a good value camera. I'm shooting on the R5 right now for this YouTube video and it is probably overkill. Um, I've also shot on the R6 before and again, I, I think for YouTube, if we're specifically talking about YouTube, then the Canon EOS R is going to be good enough. Now since we're talking about cameras and recording, I also have the Atomos Ninja 5 which I utilize to make sure that I like my frame in the video and then I also use it to check my exposure because it has more tools that are a little bit more handy than the standard um, histogram that you find in the mirrorless cameras. Another big plus about the Atomos Ninja 5 is that you can record right into ProRes which is really easy for your post editing workflow. Um, especially if you are using the Canon EOS R6 or R5. All right, so let's get into lenses. And the lenses I'm about to go over, I wouldn't necessarily recommend for beginners, um, especially if you're just trying to get into YouTube. I would probably recommend that you just stick with the Canon. If you're going with Canon cameras, go with the RF 35 1.8 or the 50 millimeter 1.8 because they're inexpensive relatively inexpensive and they also have uh, great quality so definitely go with those first if your budget doesn't allow you to spend more on glass for my youtube videos i like to utilize this canon uh, 85 millimeter rf lens that's a 1.2 and i'll use that a lot for b-roll i also really like to use this rf 50 millimeter 1.2 and the lens that I probably use the most, especially for YouTube, is the RF 15 to 35 millimeter. And I do think that that is a lens that if you are serious about kind of growing your YouTube channel and uh, acquiring good quality gear, then the RF 15 to 35 definitely might be a good starter lens for you to invest in. The reason that I really like using the RF 15 to 35 millimeter is that for some reason for YouTube videos, I do think that that wider angle look where you are getting more in the background, getting more of the environment, is a little bit more welcoming for YouTube videos. So while I do like to use longer focal lengths like 50 millimeters for some of my YouTube videos, most of the time I do enjoy the wider angle shot. It is also nicer to have a wider angle zoom lens for vlogging if you want to get into that. 
All right, so let's get into lighting. So right now for this video, I am using the SL60W Godox light, which is a really, really great value light. Now, one of the downsides to that light is that it is a little bit noisy when you are using it at full power. So what I did was that, and, it, and this is pretty easy to do, is that you can just search on YouTube how to replace that fan and it is relatively inexpensive. I think it only cost me about $20. Um, the hardest part is actually just taking everything apart and putting the new fan in and uh, rewiring some of, some of the stuff in there, but uh, it wasn't that hard and I do think that if you just concentrate on uh, finding a good YouTube video that you'll be able to do it pretty easily. So I would recommend that for a starter light, the SL60W Godox light. Now I also do have the VL150 Godox light, which I use if I need more power. It is a really, really nice light, and the, the fan is pretty quiet in this, so you don't have to worry about replacing anything in this light. But uh, it comes in this nice carrying bag, which I use all the time, and... So this is what it looks like. I do like it because it has that smaller form factor and the power bank for that light is actually separate. So it'll, you could hang it from your stand. But what that does is it keeps the actual light smaller. So um, that helps for if you want to mount your light overhead or somewhere higher where you wouldn't necessarily have it to worry about it toppling over and potentially hurting someone, which is scary. Now, just to touch on stands real quick, stands are definitely important. Um, now, when you're in your own studio, you might be able to get away with having something that's a little bit more flimsy, but honestly, if you're gonna be spending a hundred plus dollars on a light, you might as well just get a nice stand to make sure that everything is nice and sturdy. So I would recommend going on YouTube or your local camera store and just buying like probably putting $100 towards a nice light stand. Now, if you want a uh, better option that's a little bit more advanced that you can do more with, then look at C-Stands. I have a Savage C-Stand, which is a newer C-Stand and has a little bit more features than your typical C-Stand. So I'll definitely link that below so you can check that out. And I'll probably do a separate video on that stand just because it is pretty unique. but. Just remember with C stands, you can usually do more with them just because they're a little bit more versatile. So for audio, I used this a lot. And this guy is pretty inexpensive, I would say. It's a shotgun mic. This is the Rode video mic. The quality is definitely good enough for YouTube. Now in this video, I'm actually using the Rode Mic Pro, which I do like to use when I want a little bit higher quality of audio. So uh, it is more expensive, but again, you'll get that jump in quality for your audio if you really care about that. Regardless of the brand of microphone you go with, just make sure you get a good quality microphone because I think that audio is important for upping the production value of your videos. Now for the tripod that I'm using to mount the R5 right now, I am using a dedicated video tripod. It's the Manfredo 055 series. I think that this tripod's perfect. It's not crazy expensive because when you start looking at quality tripods, they can get pretty expensive really fast. And it's uh, kind of makes you feel sick because you're like thinking about spending as much on your tripod as your camera. But there are definitely great benefits to having a nice tripod, especially for video. They're definitely going to come with features that make your life a lot easier. So I would say just spend the money up front and get yourself a decent tripod. For the tripod head, I'm using the Manfredo 502AH head. And that's also a great value tripod component that a lot of people that are just getting into video acquire. Alright, so for editing and post-production, I'm using my MacBook Pro back there. It's a, I believe it's an early 2016 MacBook Pro. It's a 15 inch. Um, it's not the greatest for video. I do struggle a little bit if I'm trying to edit 4K footage at the highest quality. So um, it's not the biggest deal, but like I have the Canon R5 and that shoots 8K and 
this computer definitely struggles a lot with 8K. So um, it might be a reason why in the future, maybe in the next two years, I'll acquire a new computer to edit on. If you are looking to get a computer just for editing, then there's a lot of uh, great M1 Mac products like the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air that are gonna do a really great job for editing YouTube videos, um, and they are uh, great value too. I also have a 4K monitor from LG right here, and that's nice because it is a high quality monitor and it's great for photo editing too. If you wanna know the specific name of that monitor, then just leave me a comment below. Now, sometimes I do like to add drone footage to my videos. So uh, the Series 1 Mavic Mini is actually a really good choice for YouTube because the quality is great, it's pretty inexpensive, and then also it comes in a compact size. So, uh, you know, with the Series 2 Mavic Mini, it comes with a larger controller, which I don't like. I do like that the controller with the Series 1 is smaller, so everything packs really nicely. And like I said, the quality of the Mavic Mini is great and definitely good enough for YouTube. All right, so last but not least, we're gonna be talking about filters. Now, uh, it's definitely not something that's super exciting. It's also something just like tripods that when you have to spend money on it, it's like, you really don't want to, but it's important. So, um, especially if you don't have a dedicated cinema camera that might already have uh, ND filters in there. So these are definitely important. So make sure that you pick yourself up some quality ND filters because if you cheap out on ND filters, you're gonna get some really nasty color cast and your footage just is not gonna look good. So um, this one is the Peter McKinnon 82 millimeter two to five stop ND filter. And uh, I, do, I do really like the quality of this ND filter. I also have some breakthrough ND filters that are not variable, but also very good quality. And finally, if you wanna get real fancy with your videos, and I have this on my lens right now, get a Tiffin Black Pro Mist. And this is a quarter inch strength filter. But what this does is it takes that digital edge off of your footage and uh, it decreases the contrast and the sharpness a little bit. And then it also, will create this really nice bloom in the highlights of your video. So um, I, I really love this. And again, it's hard to pay for it, but once you do acquire it, it is nice to have for sure. That is it for today. If you guys have any questions for me, then definitely let me know in the comments section. And thank you so much for watching.